sitting out there. But it, it, uh, it actually would have been worth your while to come and watch. In fact, I did. They actually rolled in 5,000 pounds of weights and put it on that elevator and ran it up and down. So don't, you know, don't worry about it. It, it will, well, it will hold most of us. <laughs> and, and the one that was really, really uh, got me was they had to check the travel when it's on the emergency stop springs in case something happens, you know. So they put a guy down in the thing and they lowered the elevator down on top of it, 42 inches of room, which is, you know, it's like this. I'm sure glad I didn't have this job because they were threatening to leave me there. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Lord, for getting the elevator running again for everybody. Okay, let's see. Uh, we want you to, up here on the screen, we've got a notice that we, uh, we really would like for you to fill out these communications cards. If you have a joy or concern or something you want us to pray about, please write on the back side of it and leave those in the offering plate as they come uh, by. And uh, we want to have a record of you being here. So yes, fill those out. Okay, Deb is waving. Okay, any other announcements? Jeff, 
bless you, my son, and I'm, I'm grateful that you're a part of our family. And instead of passing the peace this morning, I'd like to invite you all down to shake Jeff's hand or hug his neck and just let him know that he's welcome. <laughs>
first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 104, verses 25 through 34. And it reads as follows. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things, innumerable are there, living things, both small and great. There goes the ships, the Leviton, that you form to sport it in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up, and you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you set forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, as we come to worship together here, Spirit of Truth, we just take time on this Pentecost Sunday to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, Holy, Holy. We lift you up, Lord. We magnify your holy name. Lord, just as it was in the that uh, Pentecost Sunday, almost 2,000 years ago, enlighten us. Let those tongues of fire rest on our shoulders to ignite a fire within us. Celebrate the inauguration of your church. To come together in the unity of spirit. That we all come from different places, that we would understand each other, even when we don't speak the same language. Thank you, Lord God, for all these blessings that you poured out and into our lives. So today we, we lift you up and we magnify your holy name as we pray that prayer as confidence that we have as the children of God to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to start off here today talking about Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I'm going to try to give you some background as to why Pentecost? How did Pentecost come to, to be? Uh, what started it all? How did we get to this place? Well, we have to go back into the uh, ancient Jewish calendar and, uh, and there, uh, observe the, the Jewish holy days that are still kept today in Jewish tradition. First of all, we're all familiar with Passover. Passover is the celebration of freedom for the children of Israel that were in bondage in slavery in Egypt and God set them free and uh, so that has become a celebration every year as they remember the Passover remember that the whole thing about Passover was the plagues that came on, on Egypt if they would paint the doorposts of their house with the blood of the lamb, then the uh, the plague would pass over, would pass over their hats, and they would be spared. So we have Passover. Okay, so then the next festival, uh, holy day, a uh, feast day, is what's called the Feast of First Fruits. On the first day of the week following Passover, the grain harvest began. The first grain to ripen, it's a cereal grain, uh, to those sown in winter, was barley. An omer, O-M-E-R, an omer of barley is a half gallon of barley. The sheaf, the barley sheaf was reverently cut. The barley was removed, filling a bowl. When they got to, to a half a gallon, it was taken to the temple in this symbolic way and presented to the Lord of the harvest as an expression of thankfulness. So, that started on the first day of the week following <coughs> Passover. Okay. The, two, uh, the counting of the Omer began on this day. What is the last cereal to ripen, and the first fruits from this harvest are often seven weeks later. Seven weeks later. So we have the, the Passover, and then uh, we have the first, the feast of first fruits, which is on the first day of the week after Passover. Do we remember what the first day of the week after the Passover is in our Christian tradition? It's Easter Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. So the Feast of First Fruits and Easter, Resurrection Sunday, are the same day. So the counting of Omer began on this day. What is the last cereal to ripen and the first fruits from this harvest? are often seven weeks later. The children of Israel left Egypt after the Passover and began their journey into the wilderness. And then God led them to Mount Sinai. Seven weeks later, he gave them a set of laws that we know as the Ten Commandments to live by that would govern their relationships with God and each other. This Jewish holy day is referred to as Feast of First Fruits. The morning after Sabbath following Passover, as the first fruits of barley harvest 
were being offered in the temple, Jesus was raised from the dead on resurrection of Easter Sunday. Okay, from the Feast of First Fruits, seven weeks ahead uh, for the, the second harvest is uh, the feast is another Jewish holiday known as Shabbat. Spelled S-H-A-B-O-U-T-H. Shabbat. Shabbat is also Pentecost. So, uh, count ahead 50 days from the Feast for First Fruits, another Jewish holiday known as Shabbat, or the Feast of Weeks. You have seven weeks in between the Feast of First Fruits, or Resurrection Sunday, and Shabbat, or what's called the Feast of Weeks. This is a Thanksgiving festival for the wheat harvest. So here are some of the parallels that we see. Passover and unleavened bread point to Christ, our Passover, <coughs> sacrificed for us. First fruits points to Jesus' resurrection on Easter or the Resurrection Sunday. Shabbat directs us to the day of Pentecost. Pena meaning five. Pentecost means 50. 50 days. You know, like the Pentagon. So Pentecost is 50 days uh, after the resurrection. The day of Pentecost was the launching of the New Testament church when believers of that day came together in one loaf for one body. We find the scriptural account of the fulfillment of Shabbat found in Acts chapter 2. You remember this story in Acts chapter 2 where they were all gathered together there in the upper room. And then all of a sudden, here came this big mighty wind that blew through the hall. And that blew, uh, there were uh, cloven tongues of fire that rested on, on these folks that were there. I mean, these folks were having revival. The Holy Spirit had come and the church was started off. And... They all, they came from all different places. They all came from different places and they all had different languages. But supernaturally, they were able to understand each other. And the church was born and they were together all in unity of spirit. That is the Acts chapter 2 account of Pentecost. Just as there are parallels between the Old Testament accounts of the Holy Days and the Resurrection, there is another parallel of the Holy Spirit launch of the new church. The first one in Acts chapter 2 is an account of celebration. I mean, what, uh, can you put yourself there in that day and time? I mean, they had a good old fashioned, it was the original Pentecostal revival. And, and it was a wonderful time for them. It's an account of celebration, signs, wonders, and unity. But here in this scripture today, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I believe Paul has an additional account of Pentecost. And this is an account of the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes bringing gifts. Gifts that are meant to help us and to help the church. I want you to just imagine for a minute that you have invited a guest into your home. You've invited somebody to come to come visit you. And this person comes to visit with you and brings gifts 
for every single person in your household. To me, that's what this is talking about today. The gifts of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit has come and come to his church and you, we have invited him in and he has a different gift or gifts for every single person in the household. In this case, in the household of God, in the church. Gifts of wisdom, gifts of knowledge. Folks, these are supernatural gifts. These are supernatural empowerment gifts by the Holy Spirit. So wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, various kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Folks, we here in the United Methodist Church, we do not believe that the gifts of the Spirit were for that time long ago, back when the disciples walked the earth with Jesus. We don't believe that they ended there. We believe, that's what's called the cessations. We don't believe that the gifts and miracles ceased back then. We believe that the Holy Spirit has agency and action in our lives today that Guess what? He gives us gifts of empowerment to reach a lost world. He gives us gifts of empowerment that uh, when we are faced with difficult challenges, that supernaturally, He gives us a way out. He gives us a way out. He speaks to us. With wisdom, he gives us supernatural knowledge. These are gifts from the Holy Spirit. Working of miracles, folks. I bet if I can, just each and every one of you in here, you would say sometime in your lifetime that you have seen clearly God has performed some kind of miracle in your life or somebody's life that you know. God is still in the miracle working business. Prophecy. What a blessing. What a gift that is. The gift of prophecy. And I believe this is a little different than the prophets of old that we study about in the Bible like Elijah and Elisha. Uh, I think it's a little different than that. I think the gift of prophecy is a gift of to speak positively and productively and even predictively into the lives of others meant to lift them up, to give them a boost through life's struggles. One of the things that I like to do is I, I honestly believe that God gives me the ability sometimes to see gifts and graces upon people, especially young people, for ministry. And I love to speak into their life that God is going to use them in a mighty and grand way. That uh, they have a, a destiny and a, a fulfillment of calling on their life. See, that's speaking productively and predictively into their life. And you can go to the Word of God uh, to find basis for that. Discernment of spirits. And God gives us the ability of saying, that is not right. That is a lying spirit somewhere. Or this is the spirit of the living God. Gives us the ability to see that. Various kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. This is talking a little differently than what would happen on the first day of the new church in the first century. 
And those folks understood each other's language. This is talking about a prayer language that you might have uh, and uh, between you and the Holy Spirit. And it's a way, of, I mean, you, if you remember Jesus at Lazarus' tomb, he groaned inside. It was undistinguishable. You couldn't understand it. But he groaned. I think these groanings are the Holy Spirit that uh, are a way of, of connecting directly with the Spirit of the living God. Now, why don't we have uh, messages in tongues and interpretation in our Methodist services? Well, it has to do with the fact that it can be divisive. Uh, half the people would think, think, hey, it's okay, it's great, let's bring that on, and the others don't think so. And so it would be divisive. And so it, it's not the Holy Spirit's desire to be divisive in our worship service. But let me tell you, with all these gifts of the Spirit, if there is to be, this is my opinion only, if there is to be an all-out revival, an outpouring of the Spirit of the living God, like we saw at the Asbury Seminary this last spring, if there is to be that, I look for it to be a charismatic Pentecostal revival that leads the way. And where I'm getting that is in Sub-Sahara Africa and in the uh, uh, South America revivals that are going on right now. They are Pentecostal, charismatic revivals. And yes, folks, that's happening in our Methodist churches in Africa and South America and Eastern Europe. That's what's happening. So, where does that bring us all here today? Here on Shabbat. The Feast of Weeks. The inauguration of the church. If you want agency and action of the Holy Spirit in your life. Other than the, I mean, the whole thing in Acts 2 is a wonderful celebration and a dramatic show of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be like that all the time. You can get quiet with your God. And you can invite the Holy Spirit into your house. You can invite the Holy Spirit in. And you know what? I bet that the Holy Spirit has got a gift for you. Maybe multiple gifts for you and gifts for everyone in your household. So just get quiet before God. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Don't forget to breathe and wait for it. I believe the Holy Spirit will breathe upon you. And something supernatural, a supernatural transformation, that's, that's what this Pentecost thing is, is happening. It's been supernatural move of God. And he will have such agency and action in your life uh, that you will, uh, I believe, that you will want to fulfill whatever calling God has on your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, <coughs> happy Shabbat. Final hymn is number 393, Spirit of the Living God.